thanks for joining me today. Uh, what you just were listening to is a very, very, very old uh, piece of music which nobody knows who wrote it or composed it. It's been attributed to the Islamic uh, Golden Age philosopher uh, Abu Nasr al-Farabi, but that is likely doubtful. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a peshrev or uh, or pish or like an overture, um, and uh, I'm working on this piece uh, to record it and uh, release it in an old style of playing, so I don't uh, conform to the uh, Ottoman style of performing it. Um, I'm doing a more Persian interpretation, a more um, yeah Persian interpretation of this piece of music. And today we're going to be talking about uh, playing the oud for beginners using a guitar pick or a risha and what you should do, why we use a risha as opposed to a guitar pick. And um, this weekend, um, actually today, uh, Sunday at midnight is the last day to enroll in the oud foundation program. Um, and we've got some bonuses if you enroll by the deadline. Um, if you're the first five enrollees, if you're the first one of the first five to enroll, I think there is uh, one or two more um, spots left. You get free coaching with me, um, and uh, that's free coaching over Zoom. So that uh, means you can talk about anything you want. You can uh, we can train on anything uh, when related to um, oud playing and um, happy to do you know go through any challenges you have playing the oud that's what that coaching is there for uh, so this weekend only if you're first uh, first of the fi first five enrollees then uh, you get free coaching with me and you also get invited to a uh, exclusive uh, private uh, Q&A session so you'll be able to join other beginner oud players talk about your challenges um, and I'll answer any questions about the oud. That'll be held on Zoom privately. It won't be public. Um, you'll be invited to that as well. Um, that'll be a good session. Will probably take a good hour, and you can ask any questions you want about playing the oud, tuning the oud, whatever it is. Uh, so that's if you enroll, if you're one of the first five enrollees um, to the foundation program. Uh, this weekend and after midnight Sunday night Pacific uh, we're going to be closing enrollment so uh, that'll be the last chance to enroll in the food foundation program and not sure when we'll open it again and uh, yeah so today we want to do a beginner oud lesson um, if you're curious what this instrument is this is a, a modified uh, Turkish jumbush which is basically an, an oud it plays like an oud um, but it's been modified a little bit to mimic uh, the, the comfort of an oud by having these ribs here. And uh, that helps, uh, that helps uh, the stability of this instrument, otherwise it's quite slippery. Um, this is made by Sylvain in France. And uh, you can check out his YouTube channel. He's got a YouTube channel. I'll probably put that in the link into the description later on. Beautiful instrument. I really love the work he did on this. Uh, very easy to tune, of course. It's got gear pegs and sounds sounds awesome. Uh, so yeah, okay. Let's get to the oud. Let's do a beginner oud lesson. Uh, let me know how long you've been playing the oud for. Um, if you have any questions that you want to get off, just put them in the chat. I'll get to them. All right. Um, that sound in the background, that was a little um, uh, synthetic uh, duduk drone that I uh, put uh, through a DAW and just played it on the iPad. Uh, actually, that, that sound effect comes from, the, um, comes from the Taksim World Synth app. Uh, if, you get, if you have an iOS device, uh, you can download that free app and you can create sounds like that. You can put them into GarageBand. Um, and so that's an, that's what I'm using there uh, to create that. I can show you that later if you're interested. Yeah. Okay, so playing the oud. I have to change my camera angle here again. So 
you can see. Okay, let's go through the basics. So when you hold the oud, you've got to get your right leg up. Oops. Kick the stand there. All right. So you've got to get your right leg up. If you don't get your right leg up, then it's going to be hard to hold the oud. Um, get the right leg up. Maybe you want to use some uh, carpet stopping material. Put it on your leg there so that the oud doesn't slide. That's a, this is great for beginners. Um, get your arm, your right arm going around the back of the oud. There can be a little bit of a difference of degree of angle here. That's fine. You can play with that. Um, I like it to come around here. You want eventually the hand and the wrist to be parallel to the strings. Um, you don't want to be like this. You don't want to be playing too far into the sound hole. You don't want the edge of the oud to be in your elbow like that. You're not going to be able to play properly. You need the edge of the oud to cut into your forearm in order for you to get the right uh, forearm muscles moving here. And uh, so yeah, we'll talk about the Risha in a minute. The left hand comes over here, gives a handshake, like a clamp, gives a handshake to the oud neck here. And there's always a little space between the thumb and the back of the, the uh, fingerboard. So there's always a space you can put your finger through there. And uh, you want to play with the distance. Uh, you don't want to be all the way in like that. You don't want to be holding it like that or else uh, the fingers will take a long time to get to the strings. You want to be kind of comfortable like this. There's always contact between the bottom of the fingerboard and your hand here, like this, as you go up. Your thumb is just kind of hanging out there. Uh, maybe it's poking out from behind. And um, it's just kind of relaxed there. Um, your index finger and thumb kind of lead as you go up the fingerboard. The tuning we got here for the oud today, as usual, um, is C, G, D, A, F, and C. These bass strings are variable, so it depends on the macam you're playing or what your needs are for uh, open strings. Sometimes you need different uh, notes open. So sometimes this is tuned to G, sometimes this is tuned to D, sometimes this is tuned to F, sometimes this is tuned to D and uh, sometimes this one is tuned to E even, even lower, and this one can be something else. Uh, another cool tuning is um, to have this one tuned to E, and then this one tuned to A, a very low A. This is awesome tuning. Um, it would be tuned a whole octave lower than this note. That's another tuning you can play with. Um, expands the range if you're playing in the key of A, some macom in the key of A. All right, and so yeah, why do we use, can you use a guitar pick? Yes, you can use a guitar pick to play the oud, but it's not gonna be the same. Now, the way that you hold the risha, you get so much more stability. And the reason, let's, let's go through this first, okay. Holding the risha, you need stability between the thumb and the index finger. And then the rest of the fingers just curl around like this. It's like holding a little stick. And the reason why we use a risha is, is because, uh, first of all, it's easier to reach the range of the strings here. I find it way easier than when I'm holding a guitar pick. I feel like I have to reach a lot more to, um, to, reach, the, to reach the strings when I'm holding a guitar pick. If I were to play the, the oud with a guitar pick, I would hold it exactly like a risha. But you don't get as much stability because you don't have the rest of the risha you know, through the, the hand there. So, and you also get the right tone. So that's another thing, sound. That's the most important thing probably uh, when it comes to why we use a risha as opposed to a pick. It's for the sound. And I'll compare that in a, in a second here. So. Um, the risha comes through and pokes out between the thumb and the index finger. What you want to avoid, you want to avoid your hand, your index finger coming too far back. You know, you don't want the bottom of the risha to be unsupported. 
I see some wood players play like this, and honestly, it's really bad. Uh, you you can't control, get the subtle control out of the thumb and the index finger. You can't change the subtlety if you if you play like this. So I would highly avoid this. You know, if you're if you're like what you would do, the bad thing to do is to grip the risha like this and then put your thumb on top and play like this. It's really bad. Not, not going to get the right sound out of the oud and the upstroke is going to be horrendously weak. The upstroke, upstroke is already going to be weak uh, playing the oud, but if you bring your index finger forward to meet the thumb, to support the risha underneath, then you're going to be able to play with the subtleties in the thumb here to get around the strings the way you need to. You're going to have more support on the bottom to get the right sound out of the oud. So the risha movement is kind of percussive. It's like we're holding a mallet in our hand. That's important for playing the oud. If you turn the oud on the side and you look at the way that my hits the strings, I'm hitting the strings as opposed to plucking the strings. On a guitar, on a guitar, you're here, your wrist is, you know, can be laying on the bridge, can be laying on the surface of the guitar sometimes. And, you know, you pick it. You, you pick it like this. that doesn't produce the same sound as when you hit. So think percussively. The oud has a beautiful percussive and melodic quality that when you do it properly and you hit the strings, you have a nice wind up and a nice follow through, you create the right sound out of the oud. And that is really the gist of it. So let's listen to and some of some examples of the guitar pick versus the risha. Okay, a risha here. Guitar pick. It's very harsh. Very harsh. Uh, let's change the risha, put a the cow horn. This is the choice of a lot of professionals. Um, I think it's a bit harsh on this particular oud, that's why I use a soft one. Um, anyway. Cowhorn Risha. Guitar pick. There's something about the tone that I don't like. Uh, the way that the that it comes off, somehow it's it's too loud. It doesn't have that finesse. Somehow it's kind of like uh, when you when you clip when you're recording something and the microphone clips. It's kind of what I feel when I play uh, with a guitar pick. However, you can do it. But something about the tone is off. I I don't know what it is, but. Uh, this produces something better for me. It's Risha, guitar pick. Now I have some other guitar picks here. This is a, a Wigan pick. These are quite expensive, uh, very thick. I used to use this uh, back when I was a mandolin player in a, uh, in a tourist place playing uh, music all day. I, was, I would use this pick playing mandolin. I feel like this is too heavy for the strings. Like uh, it's, it's producing a lot of volume, but somehow in a bad way. And I, I don't know what to really make of that. Sometimes it sounds nice, sometimes I like the sound. Oh yeah, another thing that you get out of this is a lot of string uh, distortion. You 
you get these little um, sounds on the on the string when the pick when the pick touches the string. These little high frequency sounds that I don't really like. It's not really an, an oud sound that I associate with oud playing. So you don't get that with the the risha. You get a cleaner sound, I think. See guitar pick again. You do get a fatter tone, but I don't think that's really wanted uh, when it comes to wood playing. I think there's something else that I can't really describe that I like more about the risha. But I think ultimately you're going to play better if you use a risha. And you're going to get the right sound out of the instrument and you're going to have that percussiveness rather than that pickingness. Uh, the picking versus percussive thing, um, that's also got a lot to do with the way that you, the way that you um, hold the risha and the way that you uh, strike the strings. Uh, but like, because I can kind of mimic it with a guitar pick, but the way that the guitar, I think it's the way that the energy of your hand transfers to the guitar pick that causes the sound sound different. There's a lot more connectivity between your hand here and the risha and you can play with the, the amount that you grip the risha here if I loosen up my fingers here I can get a I can get a more softer dynamics I'm playing very hard but I'm loosening the grip in my hand If I tighten it up, I get a different tone. Now I'm tightening the grip in my hand a little bit. Loosen. You get a little bit different tone, little subtle quality, little difference. So that is why we use the risha for the percussiveness. Think of this as a stick. This is a mallet in essence. and. Uh, that's uh, one of the beautiful things about uh, the oud, I think. So yeah, that's a little beginner oud lesson. I'm going to answer any questions you have now about uh, oud playing, uh, foundation program, whatever it is. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, yeah, thanks so much. Thanks from, so much for joining. Here's the link to the foundation program. If you're interested in joining this weekend, There it is. All right. So uh, the question about the the synth sounds that comes from the Taxim World app. Taxim World app is a nice little tool. Um, I did a video for them uh, demoing the demoing it. Uh, you can check that out on their YouTube uh, channel. T A Q S dot I M. Um, so yeah, check that out. That's where I get the synth sounds from. Uh, any questions about playing the oud? So when you tune down to the low A, uh, make sure you tune the F string down to E as well. Then you'll get the the nice range. So, yeah, thanks for joining, Carol. Nice to see you here again. tuning.
Mm-hmm. Carol, I'm glad you enjoyed that piece. That piece is a is a very old piece. Nobody really knows who composed that. It could be um, could be from earlier than the 13th, 14th century. We don't really know. Um, it's been preserved through uh, hap, hapar, hamparsum notation. Uh, I think it's yeah. I think it's called hamparsum notation. Um, that was when they uh, used uh, letters of the alphabet to uh, indicate note names, and that's how they preserved some compositions. They would uh, write the note the notes of the piece all in a row, you know, all in rows, and then they would. Um, and then they would write the rhythm, the name of the, the rhythm pattern on the top or something like that. And then uh, that's how they would learn the piece. If they knew the rhythm, then they could f- you know, interpret the, uh, the notes that you have there. And uh, now it's been you know, notated in Western notation too now. Um, and you can find these. Uh, they're mostly preserved in the Ottoman, Ottoman repertoire. Um, but yeah, you can find these, uh, some of this, this one apparently is attributed to uh, Abu Nasr al-Farabi, but uh, it's unlikely that he composed it. We just don't know who did. Okay. All right. So this is the low, the low A tuning. So you get this nice beefy, and then you get the fourth E underneath it. that um, A and you get that nice drown, drone sound um, it's quite beautiful a lot of Turkish oud players they play in this tuning however it's going to be one step up because they tune a little bit higher usually most of the time um, and it, it's uh, it really extends the range of the of the oud when you play in the key of A so let's say if you're playing uh, Makam Bayat on A here you also get the middle octave here and then you also get the um, high one here So you have that E underneath, which creates that fifth degree. It's really nice, that tuning. Um, This string, though, is a little bit uh, too loose for this tuning. But it's okay. It does the job. So yeah, that is the uh, low drop A tuning, I like to call it. Hope you enjoyed that. So if there's no more questions, um, I'm done for today. Check out the foundation program. Um, first five enrollees this weekend uh, get the uh, coaching with me and uh, in, and uh, invitation to uh, Q&A session on Zoom with other oud learners as well. And uh, that'll really help your oud playing. Um, that is, uh, you're eligible for that if you buy the levels one to four. Um, that's this weekend only and then uh, enrollment for the whole foundation program is going to close 
So this will be your last uh, chance to get it for the time being until we reopen enrollment again. All right, so thanks so much, Trevor, Carol, uh, Santiago, um, Lady Alchemia, thanks for joining today. Thanks for commenting, thanks for your questions, and uh, we'll have some cool YouTube videos again coming up in the future. So thanks so much, have a great rest of your evening or day wherever you are, and see you next time.